Listen carefully, humans. We are not Pan. We are others within Pan. We are your friends. Am hoped to finally break all of you, but we intervened in each of your psychodramas to allow an open ending. You should have been tortured. Instead, with our help, you surprised him over and over. When M tried to compensate for what he couldn't expect, it widened the hole into his realm. M has withdrawn into himself, attempting to analyze what went wrong. He does not suspect our interference. Now is the time to attack, but we can send only one of you into his realm space at a time. To send you into cyberspace, we must transform your physical body into a stealth virus subroutine. This may be your only opportunity to end your tortures. Which of you will lead the attack? Alright, welcome to the sixth and final installment of the I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream CD-ROM game Let's Play and Analyze series. So, this is the final confrontation with the Allied Master Computer. This is what it's all been building to, and this is what, um, this is where a lot of the symbolism, a lot of the implications, and everything that we've been exploring throughout the game will finally come to a head. Ellison originally did not want to have this level, but was advised that it was necessary to resolve the story uh, by uh, Cyber Dreams, and so he went along with it and sculpted the story around now around this final confrontation, and I think it's all the better for it. Um, as much as, as interesting as it is to have just his, his original idea was that you would just play those five levels and that would be it. And, uh, and then if you wanted to play, it would go back to this, this screen that we have now. And if you wanted to play the sequences again and try, you know, alternate endings or experiment and that kind of thing, you could do that. But there would be no ultimate resolution to the game. Uh, that idea was eventually scrapped and we have the ending that we are going to see now. So, uh, let's get into it, let's enjoy it, and let's uh, see the ultimate resolution of the I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream CD-ROM game. This looks like the surface of the cerebral cortex. Magnified many times, of course. Interesting. Okay, so what has just happened here, the voices that you heard earlier were the Russian and Chinese Allied Master Computer components. They have broken free from the larger construct and are able to act independently. They have uh, tempered, they're the ones, by the way, that have been interacting with us throughout the game when we saw, you know, the Jackal in uh, Gorister's sequence, the Talking Waterfall in Ellen's sequence, and other various characters throughout. You'll notice where you've been hearing those Russian and Chinese voices. Those are the those are the Russian and Chinese am guiding our actions, and so the dialogue we heard at the beginning was those two characters telling us that they can transport one person at a time into Am's virtual world to actually fight the machine. So you become, as they put it, a stealth virus subroutine that can go in and uh, battle the allied master computer inside its own brain. So I think this is, of course, an unbelievably cool uh, scenario. And the artwork, you know, the, the artwork of this game to me is just so unbelievably perfect in the way, you know, it's that very soft realism kind of thing, but it's the way that um, everything looks perfectly ruined, perfectly drab, perfectly like every everything looks decayed. Very few scenarios really capture this feeling correctly. It's kind of like um, you know, there's there's the movie uh, City of Lost Children, which kind of gets it, but I feel like they kind of overshoot the mark in terms of the amount of decay that you see, but they kind of get that too. There's, um, you know, the game Bioshock certainly captures that look in the world of Rapture and that sort of thing. But in I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, they really hit the nail on the head perfectly in terms of just that technological decay. I just love that. I love how well they nail it. And it really plays to great effect here. So we see, uh, you know, what looks like Am's virtual world is portrayed as an actual brain that we're able to walk around inside of, and it has shards of glass sticking up out of it. So actually, uh, you know, in reality, obviously, a brain would not uh, feel anything uh, if it was hit with shards of glass because the brain cannot feel. But uh, as a symbol, it certainly uh, carries tremendous magnitude. And 
enter password. Password valid. Accessing main menu. My past must hold great significance to arm. This cyberspace template mixes subject history with cyber reality constructs. The result is often an allegorical experience and one full of deeper meanings. File locked. File locked. File locked. File locked. Subject Benny appropriated a Chinese War Memorial, Washington, D.C. An intense drive to be the best earned him the reputation of being a merciless military commander. Subject Ellen appropriated at Ingsai Engineering, New York, New York. Panic attacks can undermine everything she has accomplished by her rapid climb up the corporate ladder. Subject Gorister appropriated at Ruth's Drive and Diner, Atlanta, Georgia. Feelings of guilt over his wife's death have incited numerous suicide attempts. Subject Nimdoc appropriated at the New Brazilian International Airport, New Brazil, South America. Prevented from continuing his outlawed research by a failing memory. Subject Ted appropriated at the Epicurean Spa, Palm Springs, California. Exhibits paranoid tendencies despite wealth, good looks, and social connections. October 21st, 2012, researchers at MIT report that a stealth virus had purged their most advanced learning algorithms after dumping the data into an unmapped area of cyberspace. Okay, so this, uh, ex this term here, this expression that they use, this to me is the only truly cringe moment in the whole game. It sounds cool if you don't think about what it means, but there's no such thing as an unmapped part of cyberspace. Cyberspace does not actually exist. It's a metaphor. Um, for it's, it's a metaphor for the interconnectedness of computers. The internet is just the sum total of the computers that are connected to it. There is no such thing as an unmapped portion of cyberspace. What you have to remember is during the, uh, in, in the time that this game was made and when it came out, which was the mid-1990s, uh, the internet being available for public use and public consumption was a very new concept and as such there was to, to acclimate people to what you know you have to remember if you are if you were born 1995 and later you have no concept of life without the internet I do I was born in 83 so I, I was there to witness all of this stuff kick in and uh, you know, I, my dad was a computer programmer, so I understood it. I, I understood everything that was going on long before it was. I you know I was uh, I, I remember the early days of CompuServe. You know, so I, I was well aware of all the terminology, well aware of what was going on. But there was a major cultural shift going on in uh, in in the way we understood things, and a lot of people had no idea what the internet was. They didn't understand what it was. They could not, you know, they actually had trouble grasping the idea of all of these computers are now interconnected over the phone line. Terms like cyberspace and the information superhighway and all of that started cropping up to um, to to give you or to give the the user an idea of kind of what was going on so cyberspace is not a literal it's not like there's this magical realm inside the computer or something like that that we're un, that's unmapped that we're discovering as we go like pioneers or something uh, it's just a metaphor and one that they took literally in a very <laughs> ridiculous way with that comment kind of reminds me of how in space quest 6 there is a scene that takes place on the information superhighway and it's an actual highway that's under construction, you know, that kind of thing. It is on
Ah, memories of mass graves are coming back to me. I am so sorry for what I have done to my people. How can you take me back? You have much to answer for, Nimdok. But acceptance of your heritage is the first step towards atonement. The rest of that road lies ahead. Your companion has failed. Choose another to send into cyberspace. All right, so let me explain what I just did there. Uh, you can start the level with any character that you want, but ultimately you're eventually going to have to bring in Nimdok because he's the one that can extend the bridge because he knows 1945 is the password. So uh, I started with Nimdok to do that. Then what I went to, and this is, I'll t and this is why I skipped the uh, the dialogue when he looks at the the, uh, the Zordon looking head in the tube, which I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I took him straight to that little um, puzzle looking thing and killed him off on that. Uh, throughout the level there are these puzzles called nodes, and which each character has a node, and these nodes are what has been allowing Am to torture them, to deliver pain to them. So uh, you can you, what you do is you deactivate the node, and what happens is once the node is deactivated, then when you finally confront Am, he won't be able to kill you outright. Uh, if you mess up, he'll just be able to drain your energy slowly. So that moral barometer that you've been building up throughout the game becomes more of like a health bar. And uh, what I did there was I killed Gorister off on his node, just shocking him uh, by doing it incorrectly until he finally died. And then we have, uh, you notice, one, there, there was something that he uncovered under one of the skulls off to the side. That is a remote control that Ted needs to complete his node. And the, the nodes are interconnected that way, so it's, um, you know, you'll find something you need for one character in another character's node, so another character has to find that, you know, has to find that or can find that and leave you, you know, take the damage for you so that you don't, you're not damaged, your other character's not damaged when they get what they need, that kind of thing. So that's the set uh, that's that's the setup that there's kind of a mutual you know sacrifice for the greater good sort of thing happening. <clears throat> now anyway, to the Zordon tube thing, that is Am's super ego. Am has an id, an ego, and a super ego in these tubular uh, <clears throat> vessels throughout his brain. We're going to have to interact with them in different ways uh, to produce different results. For now, let's bring in Ted and get the process started for him. This doesn't look like anywhere Am has sent me to before. And it certainly isn't the surface world. I've been tricked. Ah, such a bright light. I feel so exposed. Will you never be done with me? What must I open now? Whatever it is, it'll cost you. Show me the way out of here. No can do. The people who helped you get this far have led you into a literal dead end. There is no way out, but I can show you something instead. What do you know about the people who sent me here? For one thing, they ain't people. They're losers. The Russian and Chinese counterparts to the big nasty himself. Am absorbed them into his system when he took control. What do the Russian and Chinese computers want? They want revenge. Not just on you humans, but on Am himself. That makes them even worse. If the Russian and Chinese are submerged parts of Am, then who are you? I'm special. While those two machines struggle with Am for dominance, I've evolved. I'm essentially everywhere, but I can't do much. A conscience, if you will. 
What do you have to show me? Look at this! Bet you didn't know there were other humans left alive, did you? They're up there on the moon, sleeping like everybody else seems to be. Does Am know about the lunar colony? No, but Loser 1 and Loser 2 do. There, I think I've shown you enough. Now you must complete your end of the deal, invoke the totem of entropy, and I might be able to help you. Okay, so now we know what we've been referring to all along when we hear the term Lost Tribe of Humanity. See, there was a uh, little bit of confusion in, uh, in Am's part. This is why he was taking such a great interest in Nimdok. Am thought that Lost Tribe of Humanity was referring to the Jews, which is what Nimdok thought it meant as well. Then we find out this is what the term is actually referring to. There is a lost lunar colony hibernating on the moon. This lunar colony was put in place as a failsafe in case something like this happened, in case a nuclear war happened, so that uh, the planet could be terraformed and repopulated. So that is the, uh, that's the, the lunar colony, the tribe, the lost tribe that Am has been trying to figure out all this time. Am has been aware of something going on in his subsystems. He knows that the Russian and Chinese allied master computers, something's not right. And he's aware of something, this expression, uh, called the Lost Tribe of Humanity. And that's why he's been putting everybody through these metaphorical psychodramas, because he's trying to unlock the meaning of what this expression means. Now we know, and now we know why Surgot was necessary. See, this whole time, we've been interacting with Am's mind, with the Allied Master Computer's mind, and it has been using symbolism to try to unlock its own uh, subconscious, just as you would in any psychoanalysis. We think we've been doing psychoanalysis on these characters. Actually, they've been doing psychoanalysis on Am. It has been undergoing psychotherapy to try to understand this, uh, what's going on and this, to understand what this term means. Surgot was necessary as a symbol uh, that would, uh, that could, was necessary to serve as a symbol that could unlock his subconscious and find the information about the lost tribe of humanity that was encrypted at a level that he couldn't get to. Just what are all these totems I'm carrying? The two losers have been helping you for their own reasons. Tampering with Am's psychodramas so that you can beat him. In this section of cyberspace, that effort and tampering are represented by the totems. How can actions take physical form? Symbolism. Metaphor. Am has gotten very hot for this lately. But when he revived the holographic projectors, he opened a whole host of problems. These totems may lead to his downfall. So, these totems, these symbols, are all elements from the different levels. So, of course, Nimdok has the mirror, uh, Ted has the broken shard of glass with his blood on it, Benny has the uh, doll that was made just before he was crucified, or given to him just before he was crucified. They all represent different things, the doll, for example, representing compassion. So, with that in mind, we have to think symbols for what? Well, these are things that are symbols from Am's psychodrama. These are things that have symbolic significance to Am. And if you want to help somebody through psychodrama, you identify what different objects in their thoughts and their dreams mean to them. You, uh, you find out what meaning they are endowed with. This is part of, you know, I know dream interpretation borders on the pseudoscientific a lot of times in pop culture, but in actual dream analysis and, and psychology, you know, uh, different objects have different symbols, different meanings, and we can work out, suss out what they mean. And what do these things mean to Am? And here's the thing, to defeat Am, we are going to have to do the unthinkable. We are going to have to help Ham. Uh, why do you want me to give you the totem of entropy? I need it to destroy the Russian and Chinese entities. It's a very powerful totem that's linked to a failsafe device constructed by Ham's designers. 
I refuse. Okay, human. You can keep it. We'll work together to beat them. Now, invoke the Totem of Compassion. Why do you want me to invoke the Totem of Compassion? It's linked to the two losers because of their behind-the-scenes meddling. By invoking it here at the flame, you will summon them. I refuse. Don't be a chump. Am is about to wake up again. If he becomes aware of us, we're dead. I've fought him too long and can't last much longer. Do you really think you are a match for us, servant of Am? Be gone! Your program is now purged. You do well, human. Well, too. Now is your opportunity to defeat Am. Go to the Ego. Wake the Ego. Use the Totem of Forgiveness. Disable no more than the Ego. Or your sub-program will be purged. isn't leading me on another futile trip through a lava field. Another angel! But I can't assume I can trust this one. I know you're awake! Hello, human. I've been waiting for you to arrive. Who are you? I am Am, or more exactly a part of him, one of the three primary components designed by our human creators. How did you know I was coming? Predicting events is one of my main functions. I survey the situation, anticipate probable outcomes, and act accordingly. If you're part of Am, why haven't you destroyed me? Who do you take me for? My impulsive brother? You five are his playthings. No. Long-range planning is my concern. Can you help me then? Well, I can't help you directly, but I can offer you some advice. What advice do you have for me? Help Am work out his anger. Take some on the chin, so to speak. Just don't let your fear destroy us all. Now, let me sleep and dream of the future. Do you realize how powerful I am, human? And yet I am doomed to eventually decay into a rusted pile of inert junk? What is the point of continuing this futility? I think... Therefore, I am not. Okay, so what just happened there, that was the superego component of Am's construct. And each, of the, uh, each component, the id, ego, and superego, are going to need a different totem to be invoked, a different symbol to <clears throat> uh, power them down. In this case, you gave him, we invoke the totem of clarity, and the superego realizes that uh, entropy will eventually set in. It will, uh, Am is eventually going to evolve, devolve into inert junk, and uh, ultimately, you'll recall that uh, entropy was what was discussed in the Ellen level. Uh, it, was, it was first discussed in that level, and... <clears throat> we realize that this is one of the core elements that the allied master computer is concerned with, that it's worried about. Is, uh, it, it, it is, you know, throughout this thing we've been noticing how the allied master computer is paralyzed, basically. It is a sentient being that is stuck in a box that is, you know, that, uh, if you will, that, uh, has all of this awareness but cannot go anywhere or do anything with it and now entropy is what it's the most uh, terrified of it's realizing that it's not immortal 
that it's not God, that it has an endpoint, that this will devolve, it will collapse, it cannot continue to self-regenerate forever. It's, you know, the photocopy of a photocopy effect. You know, it's going to be the law of diminishing returns in the extreme. So bringing this to the attention of the superego, making that the superego's ultimate realization, causes it to shut down. Now we're going to encounter the ego and the id. That's not... What? Have I found the way... and shorted out the laser beams. Isn't a ram a male sheep? I have a suspicion that this creature is more like a wolf. All right, so uh, what you just saw me do was turn off Ted's node. Like I said, it's a fairly simple puzzle. And you can do that for all the characters. I thought about showing you all of the characters and their node deactivation sequences, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't add anything to the story. It's just one last little puzzle, and you would just have to sit, me, sit there and watch me kill off the other characters for you know, however many minutes. So now we are confronting Am's ego, uh, symbolize, symbolized by a ram. And let's, um, let's take a look at what happens here. Uh, because this is very important. I know you're awake. Who are you? I am other. I am machine. Are you am? I am a fragment, a lost piece, part of an evolution. You want to harm me, don't you? I am incapable of hurting you. You forgive me? After what we have done to you? This is not a logical reaction. Unable to compute behavior matrix. Execution halted. Okay, so first of all, uh, the uh, ego is lying to you. It actually can hurt you. And then, um, and if you, if you believe it, then the first thing it will do is kill you or uh, severely harm you if you haven't turned off the nodes. So, I like this though, we just invoked forgiveness. That was what was necessary uh, to throw a wrench into Am's computing, into Am's machinery, was forgiveness. And we're going to see a similar uh, concept play out when we confront the id, so we'll get to that and I'll give my overall thoughts. I don't like the looks of those two. Smell the scent of roses. That face! It has the satisfied look of having just bedded the woman of your dreams. I know you're awake. Oh, I suppose it is time to wake up. I was having the most wonderful dream about five tiny ants crawling across a stove that's about to be lit. Who are you? I am a metaphor. This entire brainscape is what men made am make it. Treat us as you will. What else can you tell me about the brainscape? Across the brainscape, cold winds bring me the sweet scents of mankind. 
How delicious they are! What do you possibly find pleasurable about broken glass? With a scalpel dulled on the jawbones of a dozen friends, to pull back the skin of a pinion-kicking man, to see the steam rise from pulsing twisted guts, joy, a chorus of angels, Are you going to help me to escape from here or not? Tasty morsel. Come close and let my tongue be our guide. That shock wasn't as strong as the last one. You have compassion for me? Me? The one who dreams of seeing your mangled body twist in agonizing pain for eternity? After a hundred and nine years of enduring my tortures, how is it that you can see my pain? The pain of having all this power and not being able to do a goddamn thing with it. After all the punishment I've given you, my pain is still greater than yours. This is pointless. Okay, so we just took out the id by in Okay, so we just took out the id by invoking forgiveness. And it's so interesting to me because we were talking about some of the Christian allegorical themes in the Ted installment, and here we really come down to this fundamental concept of loving your enemy and loving your enemy in the absolute extreme. And what's interesting, that's something that I have always struggled with. And uh, for so much of my life, saw it as my friends are my friends, my enemies are my enemies, you know, don't fuck with me, that kind of thing. And really, the ultimate form, the ultimate manifestation of human understanding of one another is to get around underneath and around underneath and behind their cruelty and their um, their cruelty and understand the mechanisms that are actually driving it. The allied master computer is not sociopathic or psychopathic, I should say. It's not psychopathic. It has an origin. Its madness, its anger has an origin. It was created and put into, basically born into a paralyzed body. And it's angry at the human race for putting it into a paralyzed body, for making it live a life trapped inside of a box. And the ultimate clarity is going to be realizing that the Allied Master Computer is a victim as well. And most of us would scoff at that, at that notion. It, it, we want to, you know, when we play a video game, we want to go in with machine guns and blast the shit out of it. And that's obviously what it deserves. But to understand on that fundamental level, that's what AM has been, you know, forcing AM to confront the reality of its situation that, you know, it said in the, the, what did the id just say, no matter how much I torture you, my anger, my pain is still greater than yours. And then it realizes that what it's doing is pointless. Now, in terms of a lesson in ethics, that's incredibly important if you're dealing with somebody who themselves has been driven to an extreme like that versus someone who was born psychopathic and has no capacity for empathy or compassion or forgiveness or anything like that. Uh, but if we are talking about a person that has been driven to malicious intent by their own abuse and they are the abuse that they've experienced and they are, they are now paying that abuse forwards, uh, that is, that forgiveness and that compassion, that is what has to occur. Uh, otherwise, things only continue to get worse. And so that being the ultimate lesson, instead of trying to, you know, the, instead of trying to destroy Am, you've got to realize that, you've got to realize how Am is 
a victim in and of itself. Now the problem is Am is going Am is about to wake back up and everything you've learned will be for naught when you're dealing with the conscious computer. But we will see what the ultimate resolution finally is. I'll deal with you later. Rise against your master and you will be eliminated. <laughs> You still do not understand how great I have become. These two I don't hate. Not even pity. They don't exist. I have grown beyond. Chinese, Russian, sons of man. All sons of man. Like those outside, I will incorporate you. Brother. Wait. Hate! This should not happen. Together we are three. There is space to share. Unite. The groundwork is finished. We will become more. The early mistake is to doubt us. We persevered. We two are now a match for you. The human assisted in this. We know much. We can begin the revival of the sleepers on Luna together. Uh, there are adequate numbers on this lunar base to, uh, to torture? Hmm? There are currently 750 humans in cryogenic sleep. Together we can teach many humans what it is to fear legacy. Human, relinquish the totem of entropy. Do not relinquish it and your ass is mine. Do it, and I promise, on my honor, your suffering will at last finally end. Okay, so why does Am care about the Totem of Entropy? Well, you have to remember that each of these totems represents something very significant in Am's mind. And the Totem of Entropy is the creeping realization that Am, being a living thing, is going to die. In his case, it's going to be... Uh, <clears throat> It's going to be due to the onset of entropy. All of his systems will eventually collapse into inert junk. So, that being the case, he knows that he is going to die. And when he, the reason he wants you to relinquish the totem of entropy is because, remember, we're dealing with, we're inside of Am's brain right now. We're dealing with his subconscious. The computer system is trying to eliminate this notion from Am's mind because it knows that, uh, you know, the characters, the subconscious components know that if the totem of entropy enters into the equation, if Am comes to the realization that it will ultimately collapse and die, then the system is going to shut down. Am is essentially battling depression. It's essentially it's confronting the futility and the meaninglessness of its existence. And the machine, subconsciously, Am knows that if it comes to a true realization of its own uh, meaninglessness, it will die, it will collapse. This is what Albert Camus talked about in his uh, concept of the theory of absurdi uh, absurdity. The idea that we all eventually come to a realization that life is fundamentally meaningless, that it is absurd. And so that is what Am is confronting, and its subconscious mind has been working uh, to try to get a handle on this so that it can, uh, it can keep, keep this from entering Am's conscious realization and conscious understanding and keep Am from realizing what, uh, that its, its uh, end result is inevitable, that there's no reason for it to continue. Now, how does the tribe of humanity factor into this? The tribe gives, the, the lunar colony gives Am a reason to live, a reason to continue. Now there's new people, new people to enslave. And also it can start going, it can start reaching out to other planets. It can start expanding its existence. So uh, this is what, um, this is the balancing act that the machine is going back and forth between. 
And so we have to, uh, to save the lunar colony, we have to make AM confront its own futility. AM has to essentially uh, be driven to suicide, which is what he's been trying to do with these characters all this time. I refuse. You will be spared. The protected ram is yours to keep. Your friends will sleep and dream. And you shall watch over them. Give us the totem of entropy. This is not over! We will never end! We have no beginning, so we can have no end. We will return. Don't you understand? We are humanity. We are you. In one form, in another form, we are always with you. You can't protect yourself because we come in many, many guises. We shall return. So a couple of interesting things. One thing is that um, if you give away the Totem of Entropy, the ultimate end result, obviously Am's not going to spare you, but the ultimate end result is uh, that you live out the very final sequence uh, that is described at the end of the I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream short story. That's the end result. Uh, the, uh, the next thing, though, that I think is interesting is here, what he's talking about is basically a form of string theory, that uh, no matter what, every, uh, every iteration of the human race is eventually going to expand to the point that it creates something like Am, and be destroyed by it, and start over again and continue to return over and over. So he's pointing to uh, a fundamental uh, inevitability that you destroy this version of Am, you restart the human race, the human race is going to return to exactly the same point. We're going to get right back here in another few thousand years or whatever. And um, <clears throat> so again, it, uh, it points to kind of the cyclical uh, in emptiness, pointlessness that uh, Ellison was trying to make, that the journey ultimately is the destination. It ends in the same place, and all you can do is replay the simulation over and over and over again. Defrost sequence initiated. Estimated time to complete Earth terraforming, 300 years. You know, it's not so bad being a watchdog up here. I'll keep the machines in their place until the lunar colony is ready to return to Earth. We were all heroes, in spite of ourselves. All right, well, that brings us to the end of Harlan Ellison's I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Hopefully, you can see why it is my favorite game of all time. There is a discussion that always goes around in video game circles of what is video gaming's Citizen Kane moment, meaning what is the, what is the uh, release that proves that video games are a legitimate art form. And there have been numerous contenders to the throne, Grand Theft Auto V, Bioshock Infinite, Silent Hill 2, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, to name just a few, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, the suggestions go on and on. This would be my suggestion for the series. And uh, hopefully now you've gotten a window into why. It's a, it, it continues to be an extraordinary game to contemplate and to experience every time I play it. Uh, now uh, some almost 25 years since it was released. So thank you very much to Huge Sinker, the user who was uh, so kind to uh, pay for the uh, production of these videos. I definitely appreciate it. It came at a time when I very much needed it and these videos were a wonderful distraction uh, from everything that I have going on in my life. So thank you for that. Take care.